So about a week ago, Pine64 announced a new flagship Linux smartphone, the PinePhone Pro. And by the looks of it, Pine64 is actually making a really legit looking Linux smartphone this go round. Now, this isn't the first time that I've talked about the Pine phone. The previous model was made in 2019 and I talked about it then. And it probably still is one of the best solutions if you want a spyware free phone because you don't have to do anything extra to it, okay? It just comes out of the box without any spookiness. Uh, you don't have to de-Google it. There's no Google trackers because it doesn't run Android. It runs actual real Linux. It also has things that a lot of us miss from modern smartphones like a headphone jack, a removable battery, and expandable storage. And there's also a case that you can buy for the Pine phone that gives you a physical keyboard, which I have heard is even better than what the Blackberries had, and it actually kind of turns your Pine phone into a pocket Linux laptop. There's also kill switches for LTE, front and rear cameras, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and onboard microphones for the people that take their privacy very seriously. So the software and the privacy features of the Pine phone uh, have always been pretty solid, at least after the initial software bugs were worked out with the developer edition. Uh, and then things like the removable battery and the headphone jack actually give the Pine phone an edge over hard Android hardware, uh, at least in my opinion. You know, if you have something like a removable battery, I think you can technically consider your battery life to be much longer since you can just swap in a fresh one. Uh, but that's where the pros pretty much end for the Pine phone. So if you were to compare things like the camera quality of the Pine phone to Android flagships, even from a few years ago, it gets completely blown out of the water. The older base model uh, for the Pine phone only had two gigabytes of onboard RAM. Uh, you could get three gigabytes and I believe it was the developer edition, but obviously most people are buying the two gig model. Uh, which, yes, is enough to run Linux on a phone, but really isn't enough RAM for you to do a whole lot more. Like, if you were to open up a browser and start watching an HD YouTube video, and then, God forbid, you want to open up a couple other tabs or try to, uh, you know, multitask with another application, that RAM is going to get eaten up really quickly in that type of use case. Uh, also, I consider this to be way too much bezel for a modern smartphone. Even OnePlus has been designing phones with very thin bezels since the OnePlus 6. But most of my criticisms uh, of the Pine phone have been addressed in the new model. In fact, I already uh, applied, I already did the um, application for a pre-order to get the Pine phone Pro Developer Edition. And if I'm approved, then I'm gonna pay $400 of real fake Fed money uh, to get my very own Pine phone. Uh, so this new model, it has uh, double the RAM, okay? It's got four gigabytes of RAM instead of two, which I'm sure will be plenty. It's the same amount of RAM that is in my S8 Plus. And obviously that's running Android, which is much more bloated than pure Linux. And worst of all, it's running a bunch of Samsung software nonsense, which uh, is also very bloated. So four gigs on a Pine Phone Pro should be running like a breeze. Uh, the processor has six cores and is clocked at uh, 1.5 gigahertz. Now, it's an ARM processor instead of a Snapdragon because Qualcomm chips have proprietary firmware blobs and we want to avoid that in the Pine phone. So comparing the processor to other phones is really an apples to oranges comparison. Uh, but this is only two cores, since it's hex, two cores less uh, than the CPU that's on board the S8 Plus or the OnePlus 6, or I think most other uh, modern smartphones are running an octa-core uh, processor. Uh, and the processor is only clocked about one gigahertz lower than I think the S8 Plus. Uh, the cameras are also much better on the Pine Phone Pro with a 13 megapixel main camera and a five megapixel front facing camera. 
Uh, and again, these are about the same as a phone like the Galaxy S8 Plus. So if you're somebody like me who was using a Galaxy S8 Plus as a daily driver up until fairly recently, then you should be fine with switching to a Pine Phone Pro. Like the hardware should be totally cool for you. Uh, you probably aren't playing any super heavy games or doing anything too intense on an S8 Plus in 2021 anyway. So, uh, you know, at this point, that phone is almost five years old. So, uh, yeah, you should be able to switch if you're in a situation like that using an older Android. Uh, so I'm really into this phone. If you can't tell by now, uh, I hope I do get the pre-order developer edition. And trust me, if I spend money on something like this, I'm definitely going to be making a video about it. But I still think that there are some big improvements that Pine64 uh, can make to their phone. So first of all, even though they're calling it a flagship phone, I still don't really consider uh, this hardware to have flagship specifications. Now, I did read their um, recent AMA on Reddit about the Pine64, uh, and I know that they're never going to use a Qualcomm chip because, like I said, they want to avoid uh, those kernel blobs, but I feel like they should look into things like a bezel-less design, okay? Even if they still need to have a notch or a teardrop for the front-facing camera, I'm totally cool with that because, you know, it doesn't bother me like notches and uh, punch holes and stuff like that as much as it seemed to uh, bother other people. And I also think that they should at least develop a screen with a full HD display. Um, I'm not even asking for 4K because between you and me, consuming media, 4K media on a smartphone is kind of dumb. Like I have a TV for stuff like that. Um, but the screen resolution on this um, Pine Phone Pro, it's a six inch uh, 1440 by 720p. So it's basically just standard HD. And I can tell the difference between standard HD and full HD 1080p on a smartphone screen. And I'd be willing to pay more. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. This phone you can pre-order for uh, $399. So it's definitely worth it. You know, what you're getting for this price, but I'm already used to paying a lot more money for flagship devices. Um, like I've pretty much been buying flagship phones for probably about, well, I since I bought the uh, Galaxy S8 Plus, so I guess about four or five years. Um, you know, I'm just fortunate to be able to afford to pay like a thousand dollars for a phone, you know, so the cost really isn't uh, an issue to me. It's just I want to make sure that I get all of the features that I really want if I'm going to pay a thousand dollars for a device. So if they uh, could maybe double the specifications here, like, I don't know, add more RAM uh, and then give me a bezel-less design as well, I would happily pay a thousand dollars for a phone like this. Uh, and then as far as the cameras go, they do look pretty good, you know, with a 13 megapixel uh, main camera. Uh, they don't come with a whole bunch of extra cameras, but honestly, I, I kind of feel like that's a gimmick, like smartphones adding, you know, three and four rear cameras. I just don't really see the point in doing that. Um, but 13 megapixels really is not a lot. Like, I'm pretty sure that my OnePlus 6 shoots better uh, pictures than that, and then my OnePlus 7 Pro definitely shoots better. Uh, pictures and videos, so I'm probably not going to really use this uh, as a filming phone, but I do think that there's a way that Pine64 could actually blow all of the other smartphones, even flagship phones, uh, cameras out of the water, and that is the fact that the Pine phone is very, very modular. So it has these pogo pins. Uh, in the back, if you uh, take off the case, it's right above the switches where you can turn off the um, modem and Wi-Fi and uh, cameras and things like that. Uh, so these pogo pins, they allow you to really extend the functionality of the phone. Uh, for example, you can see in this article here where somebody uh, soldered a, I believe that this is a thermal camera. Uh, that they connected to it. So basically you can see, you know, thermal images like, uh, you know, how hot and cold different areas are uh, using this Pine phone. So I feel like if a setup like this can be done, that Pine 64 or even a third party, because, uh, you know, it was a 
independent person that uh, developed this could develop some kind of uh, case or some type of uh, camera add-on that gives you a bigger sensor. Not necessarily more megapixels because uh, it was also mentioned in the AMA that 13 megapixels is the maximum that the current chip can handle. So an onboard uh, camera upgrade would also mean a CPU upgrade or really to uh, drive any camera with more megapixels, you need to upgrade the CPU. But adding a bigger sensor uh, would really be the game changer because on modern smartphones, like they keep adding more and more megapixels, right? Like there's smartphones now, flagships that have over a hundred megapixels, but they still have these abysmally small sensors on them. So that's why if you compare the pictures of say a much older DSLR, which doesn't have nearly uh, as many megapixels as a new, like say Samsung phone, the pictures on the DSLR is still way better because it has a much bigger sensor. So if there was a way to uh, develop an external like case or maybe just a standalone um, camera that has that larger sensor and is still able to talk to the phone, then I think that that would really be a game changer for them. And uh, you know, anyone like me, for example, who wants this phone, but also likes to have really good quality cameras for shooting video, could still go ahead and buy this. And so you get all the privacy benefits and all the uh, other benefits of this, plus you get a better camera all around too. Uh, but anyway, I'm still excited for the PinePhone Pro. Uh, you can pre-order it now, like I showed you. Uh, it is $400 and also keep in mind that this is a developer edition. So unless you have uh, experience with like Linux mobile, it's uh, I don't even think they really recommend that you order this unless you have that kind of experience, but definitely don't go and like throw your current phone uh, in the trash and then dive into this one because there's probably gonna be uh, some bugs that need to be worked out on the early, early editions. Uh, but once I get it, I'll be, uh, I guess, working out those videos on YouTube with you guys. Uh, like the video, leave a comment to hack the algorithm and have a great rest of your day.